In this video, Dr. Jordan Peterson talks about the nature of humans and how hypothalamus plays a huge role in your life. Right, and that's kind of, there's a philosopher named Hobbes, who I suppose in some sense was a centrally conservative philosopher as opposed to Rousseau, who's kind of his exact opposite. Rousseau believed that people were basically good in their natural state, so he believed nature was basically good, and he believed that culture was what corrupted people, and, and so and uh, uh, Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes, believed exactly the opposite. He believed that in the state of nature, let's say, every person was at every other person's throat, and the only thing that prevented continual chaos was the imposition of a, of a collective agreement, that would be the social contract, that essentially governed how people would interact, and that would keep that underlying chaos at, at bay. And, you know, my contention is, is that Hobbes was correct, and Rousseau was correct, and, and, and I think that if you add Rousseau and Hobbes together, you get a total picture of the world, and that's really, I think, the picture of the world that I'm trying to relate to you, it's both at once, it's like, well, you can't just attribute human malevolence and unpredictability to society, it's, it's, it's a non-starter, it's like people built society, so all you're doing is pushing the problem back, it's like, where did it come from? Well, society, the society before, well, then the one before that. It's like, well, you've got to tangle up the individual in there at some point, because people created society. And so, you can't just blame human irrationality and malevolence on society. Well, and also, it's, it's ungrateful, for God's sake. It's like, society obviously also makes you peaceful. Part of the reason you're peaceful right now, all of you, is because, well, you're not that hungry. You're certainly not starving to death, you would be a very, very different person if you were starving right now. You know, or if you were enraged, or if you were panicking, or if you were terrified, because your, your future was radically uncertain. I mean, you're just not any of those people right now. You're satiated, and I mean that technically, you're satisfied. None of your biological systems, except perhaps curiosity, which is a rather pleasant emotion, are activated in the least. And, you know, because of that, you all think, well, you're in control of yourself, but don't be thinking that, that's just not right. I mean, if you look at how the brain is structured, for example, the hypothalamus, which is a really important part of the brain, it basically, it basically establishes the framework of reference and the actions, the framework of reference within which and the actions you take in order to fulfill basic biological needs. So the hypothalamus makes you thirsty, and the hypothalamus makes you hungry, and it makes you sexually aroused, and it, it puts you into a state of defensive aggression, and it, it actually also makes you explore and be curious. All of that's hypothalamic, it's an amazing structure, and then, and, and it's really small, and it's right at the base of the brain. Um, and you can imagine it as something that has tremendously powerful projections upward throughout the rest of the brain, into the emotional systems and the cortical systems and all of that like tree trunk sized connections, you know, metaphorically speaking, and then the cortex has these little like vine like tendrils going down to regulate the hypothalamus, you know, and if it's, when push comes to shove, man, the hypothalamus, that thing wins. And so, you know, you get people now and then who have a hypothalamic dysfunction, and one of them produces a condition called, I can't remember it, it's not dipsomania, although it's, it, it's like that, it doesn't matter. It produces uncontrollable thirst, and so what will happen is that people who have this hypothalamic problem will drown themselves by drinking water, which, which you can do, by the way. Uh, and so they just cannot get enough water, and there's no stopping them, right? No, no more than there would be stopping you if you were suffering from raging thirst. It's like, it's a happy day when the hypothalamus is not telling you what to do. And, you know, you live in such a civilized state that most of the time, roughly speaking, you're tranquil and satisfied, and more or less you can imagine yourself as a peaceful, you know, productive, well-meaning entity. But don't be thinking that that's what you'd be if you were put in the right situation, because that's just not right at all. So, you know, lots of times soldiers develop post-traumatic stress disorder because they go out on the battlefield. They're kind of naive, they're young guys, you know, and, and, and uh, 
It actually is worse if they're not that bright, it turns out, because having a lower IQ is one of the things that predisposes you to post-traumatic stress disorder But anyways, they go out in the battlefield and they see what they're capable of under battlefield conditions And like, you know, we, we've been fighting wars for a very long time, millions of years, you know, chimps basically have wars with other chimps The troops, right? Because the juveniles will patrol the perimeter of their territory, and if they find other chimps from other troops that they outnumber, they will tear them to pieces like, and chimps are really, really strong, and so when I say they'll tear them to pieces, I mean that literally, you know, they, they tear them to pieces and Jane Goodall discovered that originally in the 1970s she didn't even report it for a while because she was so shocked you know, she kind of assumed, like most followers of Rousseau that the human proclivity for warfare was Part, that part, that was something that was uniquely human, you know, it had something to do with our, our unique self-consciousness or our intelligence or something like that She had no idea that it was rooted that deeply, you know, we, we split from chimps about six, seven million years ago, something like that And so, we were patrolling territory, we were gang members seven million years ago, and, you know it, that, that's, that's minimum estimation, because of course that ancestor shaded back maybe 20 million years into entities that were roughly primate-like and so territoriality and the, and the proclivity to defend territory is so deeply embedded in us it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's like it's the, the control center for our whole brain and so there isn't anything more important to us, I would say, than maintaining the match between what we want to have happen, and what other people are doing, in response to our actions Like, that's that, that's what we want And as long as that match is maintained, then our emotional systems, and I would say anxiety is probably primary in that regard Our emotional systems remain inhibited They're on, they're ready, like, like a nuclear reactor rods are on And the rest of the brain dampens them down but it's like, it, you don't want them to take time to start up, man You want them to be on at a, at a tenth of a second's notice when it's necessary And so, you know, that's kind of why Well, if you look, like, look at a wild animal, it's like, it's alert, you know It's ready to dart this way or that way, especially a prey animal Instantaneously, and it has reflexes built into it, as you do That will respond way before you're conscious So, for example, if you happen to be walking down a trail and you detect something snake-like in the periphery, you'll leap away before you even know that you leapt and that's because it takes a fair bit of time to actually see a snake by which I mean form a conscious representation of the snake you know, and maybe it takes a quarter of a second or something like that or even longer but it doesn't matter, maybe it takes ten, you know, a twentieth of a second, a tenth of a second but the thing about the damn snake is it's way faster than that it's really fast, that thing, and it co-evolved with primates, by the way And so it can nail you, like, way faster than you can look at it So you have your eyes map snake-like objects right onto your reflexes So that the eyes go, the eyes make you jump And then they see after that, it's like, yeah, well, now you can see, that's no problem, you know So, alright